You've now tuned in to the Drawing Board Podcast, a powerful, thought-provoking discussion where we talk about family, relationships, ministry, community, and career. Let's see what exciting guests we have on our show today. Hi, this is Andre Ebron, the host and the founder of the Drawing Board Podcast. Tonight, you know, we, are, we always talk about family, relationships, ministry, community, and career. And tonight I have the coach, the one and the only coach. I call him Coach Evan. You all know him as Coach Evan Naper. Napper, right? Yes, coach Napper. Evan Napper. Yes, yep. sir. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you for having me, sir. How have we been? Oh, man. Excellent. So it's been about a little less than a year since we've seen each other. Uh, right around Thanksgiving, banquet time. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. So Coach Evan is the head coach of the East Detroit Tiger Cats. And uh, we're going to talk about tonight the importance and the relevance of the role that a coach plays in the life of a young man, as well as we're going to break down. i got to give you some extensive history about the Detroit Tiger Cats, the East Detroit Tiger Cats, and then we'll round it out. If you have any, for all of those that are watching, all of my TC family, if you want to call in, the number is 248-579-5295. We want you to be able to to interact and to get involved. But before we jump into all of that, Coach Evan, I have a question for you, sir. Yes, sir. So break down for me. Like, I always ask people when I'm interviewing teachers, I say, why teaching? But for you, I'm going to ask, like, why coaching? Coaching to me is, uh, I mean, it's it's super important because I get to do it in a community I grew up in. Okay. Uh, I played Tiger Cats from 97 to 02. Okay. Um, Actually, for shout-out to President uh, Gus. Still coaching, played flag for Coach Gus back then. Okay. Uh, the big thing for me is uh, when you you play this sport your whole life and you observe it and you watch it, you want to give back to kids. It's really important. I want my boys to play football when they get older. Okay. Um, you know, you see it, you love it, then you want to do it. Um, I played ball, we never won anything. All right. You know, we never won anything of significance. And, and to see the program grow now in 20 years um, – we have, you know, personal success, professional success, and we have, and we got a lot of trophies. Right. So that's a big thing for me um, to see the happiness on the kids' faces, you know. And then I'm, I'm setting up something with our executive board and our other coaches, so that my kids have a foundation and a football program to look to for support when they get older. And I, what I think is very important that I think distinguishes the Tiger Cats from um, other uh, activities, I'll say is that there is a full-on program uh, from flag all the way to varsity that teaches them the, the, the technical skills, uh, that works with them on the social and emotional skills. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I loved about it, because Andre, my son, you know, Andre II, uh, he played for the Tiger Cats last year. It was his first experience with uh, contact, right? Exactly. And yeah. uh, it was his first real experience of having to be worked out like that as well. And what I loved is you always spoke to his confidence to encourage him right. and hold him accountable. And uh, the team concept that you all build there uh, from the older, uh, the varsity team coming down and helping to coach the JV and encourage them to the JV, you know, encouraging the flag, but watching the different levels of the program. And so this is just my shout out as a parent <laughs> of the Tiger Cats. Uh, if you're looking for a program, and I'm talking about a full on program. They can take your. They can start how early? At what age? Uh, it's uh, age six. At as age of, six. As of August first. As of August first. So you yeah. have to be eight, six years old by August first. Yeah. Um, and if you're looking to put them in a program that will help mature them and grow them as a student athlete, you hear it? as a student athlete, uh, the Tiger Cats are a great place. Uh, and I'll just say we have some crazy TC parents out there. We love absolutely. it. Absolutely, absolutely love the Tiger Cat parents and uh, all of the coaches. What I love about it is, you know, I'm I'm an athlete, so Absolutely, I love yeah. a player coach, right? And you all are player coaches, so uh, to see you all come back, and not just yourself, but a lot of the coaches at one time were Tiger Cats. Yeah, I think currently on staff we have four. Okay. Uh, two this year, first year coaches. Uh, yeah, guys been around a long, long time. Uh, right. Guys I played ball with. 
we actually have uh, some alumni coaches in high school. Okay. Uh, our vice president, Gus Richardson, has moved on, and he's coaching at Lakeshore High School. Okay. Uh, Congrats. Coach, shout out to Coach Gus. Shout out Gu- okay. Coach Gus. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to uh, Coach Brandon Jeanette and Coach Cody Roth. I played ball with Brandon for about five years. Okay. Uh, Cody Roth's father is uh, one of our sponsorship coordinators. Uh, Cody played Tiger Cats, uh, was a high school player at De La Salle. Now he coaches at Tower as well. All right. Um, you see, You see uh, the league is ESFL. You see a lot of ESFL guys out there. Yeah. And uh, it, it cultivates uh, beyond the age of 13 when we end. You know, we, we have relationships with these guys all the way uh, through high school. I, I mean, we, we go and we follow them, and, and we have personal relationships. We go to their houses. We see their families. Uh, shout out to Omar Embry, 160 pound Division II state champ wrestling. Shout out, congratulations, <laughs> sir. He, I heard uh, you were out there flexing, man. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, went and saw him at Ford Field uh, this winter. Okay, won a state title. Uh, he's a kid, you know, been with me for a few years as a football player. Right. Um, not only an A plus football player, but an A plus human being. Yes. Uh, and and there, I've got 30 or 40 of those in just my seven years that I could speak to. Uh, so th- that's a big thing for me. I do have to say one thing. No, go I ahead. Will, I will get killed at home. No, listen, no. We, we, I will get no, killed at home. Listen, hey, we're, we're, we're rounding that corner. We're rounding oh, yeah. that corner, okay? I, I, I got one thing I got to say. Uh, All right, go ahead. I, I, I don't get to do any of this without the support system and the love at home. Yes. Uh, my wife and my three boys uh, and our golden retriever and puppy. The and the new yes. dog. Yeah. Right. Um, if it wasn't for her um, straddling up them kids and she brings them to practice, she's around. If it wasn't for that none of this would be possible. So uh, you know what it's like? I you know, do. Taking the kids around. Absolutely. Doctor's appointments, shots, all that stuff, groceries, dinners on the table when I come home. Uh, shout out to Jesse. I love you, baby. Thank you. Right. And I appreciate all the support. That's oh, yeah. number you, one A1 you had right to there. Get that yep, in. Yep. So listen, so <laughs> I, was, I was going to bring that in. Uh, since we're there, we might as well talk about it. One of the things that I loved about uh, the Tiger Cat coaches is that you all included your families. So, mm-hmm. like, your wives were present, your children were present, um, if they, your, the cousins were present. Like, you know, like, it was yeah. a, it was a whole, it was a fam, it is a family event. Mm-hmm. So, out there, you get a chance, like, families actually get a chance to bond and to mesh and get to know one another. And literally, it does become your Tiger Cat family. 100%. You know? 100%. And so, I, I, I think that that is something that is commendable. And I think that's something, you know, as the program continues to build, I think that is what makes for me and what made for me the experience so unique. Because for for Andre to get a chance to see within his coach, mm-hmm. his coach's wife and his coach's children, and they are present and they are involved, and, you know, and now I'm sure eventually the dog's <laughs> going to make it oh, yeah. to, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. to the field. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, and then um, I, I just loved uh, the fact that uh, you all were family men. I think it makes a difference. Uh, 100%. I, I lead by example is, yeah. is, is something that comes to mind with that. Um, all of us. Um, so Coach Gus, our president, put five boys through the program over all right. the course of, of 20 years. And uh, Dennis, Coach Dennis. Uh, right. Shout out to Coach Dennis. Coach Dennis, shout out, man. <laughs> Coach Dennis uh, put both his boys through. His son is, uh, his son is a, a coach this year again. Okay. Uh, he's been off and on for about five years. Um, Coach Mike, his kids are in the program. Mom was a board member for, for or his wife was a board member for quite a few years. Uh, we've been doing this now um, for so long. Um, Ron Orshkowski was president for, for a, quite a long time before uh, Coach Gus. And uh, his, his wife was a board member. I believe him and his wife are both in our Hall of Fame. Uh, they, they, they set a nice foundation through the, through the 90s and early, and early and mid-2000s uh, to set us up for the success we're having now. Um, especially with the reduction in numbers, you know, it's, it's, it's all changed. That's right. Uh, you know, 22 years ago, uh, when I played, we had 96 kids just in the flag program. Oh, wow. So six, seven, and eight-year-olds, we had, we had 96 kids. We were not a part of the ESFL as a flag program. We w- had reached, you know, a bunch of uh, the teams had got together because a lot of big turnout back then was, was, was that age. And, then, I mean, we're talking 40 kids on freshman and JV and then another 30 on varsity back then. Uh, we're nowhere near that now. Obviously, you know the the, the sport has changed. Um, the the avenues for other sports has opened up more as well. So you see a lot of those different pathways. And, and, and there's less dual sport athletes, you know, due to wear and tear. Right. Uh, you know, it's just health has advanced. So the, the the numbers will you know split up a little bit. And I also think that uh, people's uh, focus on uh, recreation or athletics uh, has also shifted. 
just because, um, you know, when we were young, that's what that's what we did. We yep. after we left practice, we still went and played, pick them up, mess them up, so you know, oh, I, or you know, I, something I, like that. So bef- before football season at our field at uh, Ten and Hayes, uh, right. there was basketball courts there for the longest time. Right. And uh, in the summertime, I'd get up and I'd eat breakfast and I'd hit that court at ten o'clock in the morning. I'd come home and streetlights were on. I mean, that's just what we did. It, Absolutely. It, it, or basketball city was was a big thing where I'm from. You know, everybody went to city with six dollars. Right. So they yeah <laughs> pay the seven if, right. Seven, one of one of us had to fork up a dollar for a basketball, and we were good. I mean, it's just it's less people are outside right. and now. You know, uh, right. for for various reasons, and and, and you have the, uh, the the health culture too with concussions has, has been a big thing, and uh, you know the the technology in helmets now is is so far ahead of what it was. I mean, with uh, the ride dolls and the zeniths of the world, who uh, are. And, and you know, setting rules on helmets, and and we're sending our helmets out for conditioning more often than we ever have, and and that's the thing that I like to say to parents too is is yeah, it's it's a risk. Basketball's a risk. Soccer's a risk. Soccer has the highest ACL injury rate out there. Mm. Um, basketball, you know, ankle injuries are, are so frequent now, and and that's a symptom of athletes. Uh, no, being it, better as well, absolutely. You know, the, the the game is bigger, faster, stronger. Which you from a from a fan perspective, you want to see competitive football at any level. Right. You know, our flag uh, is very unique. Uh, I think there's only a couple other leagues around here that have the same type of flag program. We are 11 on 11 competitive flag, and it's a really good game to watch. Oh no, get serious! Uh, six, seven, yeah, and eight year olds, man, right. they're out there banging and, and, and they're blocking, they're learning, and and they're they're, they're throwing passes out there. Uh, a lot of tackle or a lot of flag programs are five on five or seven on seven and you're just learning the skill positions you're not learning how to block how to get in a three point right those are the most important things when we do conditioning next week we have an entire drill just set in a three-point stance fire off and then you run a 10-yard sprint just simplicity like that is what builds these kids up so that when they get to the tackle program, they're not like a deer in headlights, right? You know, and then and into that second week, then we're we're tackling a pad, and it's and it's one step at a time. It's on your knees and your, your shotgun blast. Those are the things that, from a program perspective, that you have to you have to do, or you'll fail. I mean, it's as simple as that. Yeah. Now the one thing that I another thing that I love about the program is there's a certain um, there's a certain passion and energy. That that is synergized around, uh, <laughs> you know, building these programs and you know coaching, you know, uh, these young fellows to become great young men. And for whether it's from the parents or from the coaches or from the stands, uh, I remember one place specifically. Um, it was this young man we call him Prime, you know. Oh yeah, and yeah, yeah. Listen and and shout Prime, out to Prime. Yeah, shout, shout out, out to, to Prime. Prime. <laughs> and this young man. I mean, excellent athlete, a great kid off the field, always showed love and respect. Uh, man, he lit this guy up. I mean, and here, here's yeah. the thing: though. it was yeah. it was a legal hit. It was there was nothing wrong uh, with the way that he tackled or anything. And when the the referee decided to make the decision to exclude him from the game, oh man, listen, the stands were in the uproar. I mean, we were we were fired up and and we were firing off. And we were upset, but. What I loved about it was, um, I think it was Coach Dennis. Both because you you had to keep the game going. You slapped him five, you know. I uh, I'll, I'll take myself there. Uh, I, I was just talking to his mother about this the other day. He was okay. signing up this year, and uh, yeah. I, it was never harder to take a kid's helmet for the game because he was he was removed from the game. Right. And uh, <laughs> I say to the young man, I say, uh, son, uh, I need your helmet. Uh, you can't play the rest of the game. And his eyes, his eyes got as big as, as they could get, and I'm almost well, and I'm now so sad. Yeah. And uh, I mean, to 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 go through the play again uh, very quickly. Uh, it's a defenseless player call on contact, and uh, yeah, the parents were upset. We watched the video a hundred times. Um, within the organization, we even had some 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 talk about it, and right. you know. For that, when that happens, when a, a young man gets suspended, MHSAA is you're, you're out for that week and the following week. Uh, biggest game of the season was the following week, and right. and, and I, I tell you guys just from a character perspective, that was the heart and soul of our football team. He walked in day one as a captain, mm-hmm. and uh, it was a huge blow to the football team. And, and I never felt worse again taking a kid's helmet. And um, but that's the thing is is that's a kid that's been there six years. 
uh, has given his heart to us. He's at every workout. He's at every every single thing. And we try to, and that's leadership, and that is, you know, even by example. And, and it was an effort play. He, right. he, he wasn't he wasn't taking a shot at a kid. It was a full effort play on on a on onside kick. Right. And we're trying to eliminate that so that those situations don't arise. Uh, we don't want our players to be defenseless, um, whether it's my, my guys or an opposing player. But, um, you know, those are something that the MHSAA has done very good due diligence trying to eliminate the ball bouncing in the air on purpose, uh, things of that nature, so that people don't get hurt. And, and that's a big for me. I don't want to see any kid uh, hurt and taken off um, and have to go to the doctor or the hospital, which it, which – it happens all the time. You guys see – everybody watches the NFL or the NBA. and I mean, we all saw, you know, Gordon Hayward freak accident, an injury, mm-hmm. um, incidental contact on that. You, you see it all the time. So, uh, But the thing is, is, is the family aspect of it, you know, I had to grab him and I had to give him a hug, and, you know, and, and he cried. And, and, you know, kids do that. That's what, that's what kids do when they're upset. And, you know, it's just the way the game went. But he's back. He's, back. he's, back. <laughs> he's got one yeah. more year left this year. This will be his last year. Uh, his his brother was with us too uh, for seven years as well. Right. He played QB, didn't he? Uh, he was a, our. Uh, he was one of our uh, backs. Okay. Uh, we had a good rotation of backs last year. I think we had four or five guys that were I mean super solid in the rotation. Okay. And uh, he, he was the leader of the football team. Right. Uh, he started corner for us. Shut down one side of the field. Uh, had a great championship game, uh, even though we lost. Uh, I'm happy he's back. Uh, he's 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 doing very well. Good grades, all that stuff's good. So I talk to the mom quite a bit. She's she's an absolute doll. So <laughs> right, yeah. So I mean, I I just thought it was uh, excellent the way I saw you interact and I saw uh, Coach Dennis interact with him, and it was a full effort play. Of course, uh, one of the things that uh, I know you all don't take. Uh, uh, any stuff from is you you don't go out with any type of intentionality to hurt and harm another player. Absolutely. And that is one thing I know you all uh, don't play. And so when he gave a full effort and uh, however, the, however it went down, the way it went down, it was the whole team was impacted because he was a leader. And oh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. and that's one of the things that, uh, that I'm sharing with uh, those that are viewing is that if you are looking for, your young man to find a place with those leadership because he has he has and I'm speaking about him specifically but I'm talking about all of the young men in general is there are some innate qualities that will not get developed or exposed unless you put your children in the the oh, opportunity yeah. or an environment and so that the camaraderie the leadership the the coaching the ability to inspire and motivate because I know little Dre he got fired up you know <laughs> I mean yeah. you know and and when Prime hit the field, you know, the whole team was ready to move. Oh, yeah. Because I believe through, uh, you know, with his mom, of course, and then, you know, with the Tiger Cats, like his – he had the opportunity to express those those qualities. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think for me the most important thing uh, uh, that we're not giving our, our young people is adversity. That's good. I, oh, think, I think that's – Expound the, on that. So I, I, I think that we, we, we love our kids so much and we don't want them to get hurt and we don't want them their feelings to be hurt. Uh, I think I think growing up, um, especially uh, before the age of twenty five, mm-hmm. uh, it's it's a scientific thing that your your frontal cortex doesn't fully develop until you're twenty five, and that's where you make decisions. Right. Uh, I, I think putting some adversity through a child, and it's whether it's the game seven six, and you're marching in the end zone, and you need it, and I need every ounce of what you got for the next however many minutes. Right. That's adversity all on its own. And we have a saying, it's we all we got, we all we need. And that's, you look over to the guy next to you, he's going through the same stuff you're going through. And it's reaching down deep when it's muddy and it's wet and it's, and it's, and it's tough. Uh, you know, I've been there. I've been in those trenches. So, right. so I mean, it, it's really, really important that they, you know, and losing is important too. That adversity, you know, we learn more from losses than we do from victory. And it's in every aspect of life. You know, we learn from mistakes. You know, it's it's one thing to go through life. Hey, we're all good, but then the first time you face some adversity, you don't know how to handle it. I think I think youth sports in general is a very good way to competitive youth sports is is a good way to um, instill that toughness into into a young person. I know toughness is it's not everybody has it, but I think I think it's something that's teachable uh, to go through that. You know, and the team works another thing. You know, pick up the guy next to you. Um, we don't have enough of that in, in life. We, we don't have enough community. 
Right. Um, you see this, you're in, you're in the church. Right. You know, um, you know, way before it was the church picked everybody up. It's, it's that same type of concept. Right. You know, one of your guys is down, uh, you know, you pick them up. And, you know, football is that escape, too, you know, because we all have problems. Right. None of us are perfect. None of our kids are perfect, you know, and, and this, is, this is the outlet. And, uh, yeah, the big thing for me is, is putting them through the test. You know, and we do it every day. You know, there's conditioning. We run sprints. Absolutely. We run sprints to prepare them for that. We, we you know, we, we drill. We, we do six-man. We, we go through the offense. We, we repeatedly, we hammer, we hammer, we hammer, we hammer. Hey, six-hole, two-hole. You know, it's that stuff. That's right. Uh, you know, uh, it puts in the repetition, the discipline. It does all that for, for these young men. And, you know, I have, I have a thing. Every year I come in uh, when, we, when we get out of conditioning and we break up into our teams, I say, my job is, and last year we had 22 young men, I said, the day you get here, my job is for the next four to five months make you better young men by the time you leave here in early November. Absolutely. So that's the number one goal. I don't care about trophies. Um, if that doesn't happen, I would never sacrifice that to 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 win. To gain the trophy, yeah, right. you know. Because and here's another thing: we got to think it's youth football, right? You know, it's youth football. We do have to keep the fun aspect. That it, we do yes. have to keep the fun aspect, right? You know, and, and just from experience, losing isn't fun, right? So we we build this up, we build this culture, and, and and usually it turns into success. You know, when you stop trying to be competitive from a football aspect and just work on your kids and you work on your team. That stuff comes with without hesitation. I'll say that forever. Right, and I I think that is phenomenal. And I witnessed it and got a chance to participate in it, and <laughs> got a chance to see uh, what I one of the things that I looked forward to, and I did uh, because I love to see uh, my son needed to run. He did. <laughs> he needed to run. And uh, when and all of those are transferable principles that you were talking about. So mm -hmm. when you're talking about. Uh, mental toughness. You're talking about grit, the ability to not quit when things get tough, the ability to uh, put yourself in a position that even when you feel like giving up, making sure that you stay at 100 because your teammate is depending on you, you know, no matter if you're entrenched in muscle. All of, I got all of that imagery, right, oh, that you yeah. gave, right, and the reality that life will, th those things will happen. Uh, but what I loved is that uh, for me, what I think is lacking in a lot of uh, people in general is the ability to endure, right? And yeah. so, what, but the thing about it is when you choose to endure, your capacity increases for what it is you're able to handle. So when you start off with conditioning or hell week, you know, oh, yeah, <laughs> and everybody's yep. going through, right? But then when they, at the end of each practice, when they're running the sprints, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're pushing their, you know, that next man or to finish at a certain time. And they may have to run extra sprints depending on, like, but by the time you get, like, a quarter into the season or midway in, like that kid who was last is now pushing forward, you know. Exactly. His, his, his conditioning has come up. And so most people, uh, I believe, had challenges in life because they haven't put themselves through that level of conditioning. Exactly. And so, yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to piggyback on that point because I think that that's huge. Uh, even when at the end of practice they've exhausted everything, they've done all these things, like the sprint lets them know there's still more in you. Oh, yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, being an athlete – um, you know, I thought I think that that's super cool. And being a coach, I'll bring up this statistic across Metro Detroit. They say 85 percent of the homes are single female uh, dominated homes. So when you're talking about coaches, I know for me in my personal life that coaches played a huge role because I got a chance to see proper male uh, example or men who were men who didn't pretend to be perfect but men who were willing to be present, right? So, you know, the whole concept of presence over perfection, right? Yes. And they were real. Like, I still have stories about my coaches now. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. And, but they were, like, they were pivotal, mo pivotal moments when uh, the coach, even though maintaining so, so many degrees of respect, like, challenged you to dig deep, to not give up, and to play your best. So I'm, exactly. I was a ball, basketball player, right? Basketball and track. And uh, I tell the story where we go into the locker room and we were a team for whatever reason. We played to our competition. I have no idea why we did this. But you told me this too. Yeah, you told me right? this before. So, I remember this. Yeah. So <laughs> the coach, he chose to um, use some interesting words to encourage oh, our, yeah. you know, 
Oh. I, I, I may have been accused of doing that a couple right. times you know? in my younger days. So. Yeah, so, I mean, but the thing about it is that in that day, it still was so motivational. It was never condemning. It was never to make us feel bad. It was to fire us up. Now, what do you guys say? I can't think of what you guys, what, what we say um, when, you know, we go into the huddle before we come out. What is it? Oh, uh, well, here's here's what we do. Coach Dennis says a prayer. Okay. <laughs> Oh, no, that's good. <laughs> Coach yeah. Dennis has a prayer. Uh, usually the kids come up with a chant. Right. The <laughs> they chant, always right, come yeah. up with a chant. Yeah, they all, each squad's got a different one. I can't even remember it. It's been so long. Okay. <laughs> but um, usually, yeah, Coach Dennis has a prayer for not just us, for the other team. Uh, okay. Shout, again, shout out to Coach Dennis. Yes, yeah, sir. But uh, we, uh, it usually, um, right before it's we all we got, and okay. that's all we need. And, and, and we, we, we go with that. I, I, but the, the – the positive male role model uh, thing, and you're right. Yeah, there's there's a lot of homes out there where um, it, it's tough for moms out here when when they're raising, uh, especially young boys, right? Because they go through not only mental changes and growth, they go through some very very uh, difficult physical changes. They do, and that's the same problem with our, our single dads out there too. You know, yeah. so uh, in in my team, I have 11 and 12 year olds. That's that time, right? Um, you know, there's been years where, um, you know, uh, I've had uh, kids in my car every day. Pick them up on my way pick home from up. work, take them to practice, right? <laughs> and then drop them off. And, and yeah, you really learn a lot uh, about a kid uh, because you know, if the first week or so the ice is broken, you guys are good. You know, you feed them. Uh, you, hey, you need cleats. You know, you you do things like that from from a. Um, a community perspective because right. it's it's nothing that I wouldn't expect from one of my other coaches to do for one of my players, and uh, positive enforcement is is one thing for me. The biggest thing for me is effort. Right. Um, I will always reward effort because effort eventually is going to translate to results, whether it be in the classroom, it be on the football field, or it be in the home. Right. Um, and that's all of us should do that. And effort always has to be there. We can't get complacent. In anything, you know, C's are not acceptable. Um, I, I would hope not in anybody's home. I would, let, let, let's say that again. Those are, C's are not acceptable. C's are C is average, and, right. and I tell my 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 lovely woman at home all the time. I go, if we strive for perfection, and we fail, we're still better than everybody else. Right, and that's an important thing to to go on. I, I learned that from a mentor of mine a long time ago, and I, I say that to my kids all the time. Strive, and, and you're never going to be perfect. But if you need to try, and if you fail, I'm I'm still gonna applaud the effort. That's right. You know, because you get some hot dogging out there. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. And, and listen, the effort you can tell, like exhaust everything that you have, and if you still come up short, you're still further than where you started. Hundred percent. And, and that's and I think that that's what has to happen. So when we're in school and we're talking about grit or we're talking about the ability. Uh, for people to go beyond what they currently know to challenge themselves to learn something new. Like that becomes for a lot of people, even in adulthood, when they are encountered with something that they're unfamiliar with, they have a choice to make. Either they're going to push and plow through or they're going to either just recess and fall back, right? So a lot of people, I've seen it, like when they, because it's intimidating sometimes to admit you don't know or it's intimidating to push past your current limit. But I think that what you all are really good about doing in various ways is helping young men push past those fear. So I remember day one uh, when Dre is getting ready to get the contact, oh, right? Yeah. And so, you know, when, when he prepares himself for the contact or he's getting ready to hit the pad and, you know, uh, Coach Jermaine is like, come on, Ebron, let's exactly. go. You know? <laughs> I could just see his voice say right. because it was a lot. Come right. on, Ebron. <laughs> yeah, it was a whole lot. And then – when he finally, you know, uh, he lost that fear, uh, and sometimes you lose the fear to act because of somebody else's confidence in you. Exactly. Before you build that confidence within yourself. And I, I do want to, uh, and I know it sounds like, and yes, I am a little, you know, yes, I got my TC shirt, so yes, <laughs> I am a little biased, but uh, what I'm sharing with you is the wholehearted truth about what I witnessed with my own eyes and what my family witnessed and experienced with Dre. So by the end by the end of it, and, and I did, as a, as a dad, I told him, I said, hey, man, when you get on that line, either one or two things is going to happen. Either A, you're going to put him on his butt, or B, he's going to put you 
own your butt. And, and there's only one thing to do either way. <laughs> yeah. Go back to the huddle and get ready to do and it again. Yeah, get ready to do it because you're right. not getting no slack. I that's mean, right. I, I mean, I I have to treat you like everybody else, right? That's right. And that's and that's not singling out your son. It's just any kid. You no, know? It's, yeah. Uh, it's it's important, and and a first year football player, uh, case in point, your son is is you you build him up. It's 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 a blank canvas, um, and, and you can you can get him to a point and you could see progression from from day one to the end right and, and you know that's that's a, in the case uh you know better man than than he came in as and, and that's that's why we have such a good turnover on returners um i mean we started in flag mm-hmm. i mean last year we had 25 flag boys and uh very successful from a, from a um, winning percentage and and they, they made it to the semis in the playoffs they lost to an undefeated football team um and they're they're ready to go. I mean, they, we're we're our numbers are actually pretty solid compared to last year, and uh, I'm I'm real confident in the season. Um, again, at all four levels, we want to make the playoffs. I mean, we have that goal every year, but I mean, this year is a real logistic shot. I think, I think our freshman numbers are the flushest they've been in in the last couple of years too. So, you know, right there, that that six, seven, eight, nine, ten, we're we're right there where we need to be. Well, that I think that's excellent. So. Um, the season is coming up. Uh, Monday. Yeah, it's Monday. Monday. So, if uh, somebody's out there and prospectively wants to join, like, how do they get in touch with you? How do they get their son involved? So, if you go to uh, eastdetroittigercats.org, you can you can look up information there. We have a Facebook page, East Detroit Tiger Cats. Um, shoot them a, a a post or a message, and they'll get back to you. I do not have the the organization's phone number off the top of my head. Uh, but you can uh, pull that up. That's on the website as well. Uh, our building is open uh, all this week. Uh, we're actually doing meet up and eat up. Okay. Uh, from four to five thirty every day, or I'm sorry, four thirty to five thirty, if I'm correct. Um, where if anybody wants a meal, uh, the state comes out and gives us some support, and we've had quite a good turnout. A lot of people have been out there for that. Um, <clears throat> hold on, let me pull up the website. Okay. And. Uh, and so while you while you pull that up, uh, I think I have. Let me see. So the phone number is five eight six seven seven four one seven six zero. Yeah, and, and and if if we're not open, uh, we open at five o'clock usually every day. Uh, somebody will return your call same day. Um, we have a very affordable registration package. Uh, we have payment plans available. Yep, had to bring Dad his packet. Right, had to, <laughs> young, young Andre's out of town, so right, Dad's had, got some paperwork to do by Monday. <laughs> yes, had, had to get it in. All right. <laughs> uh, the thing I would say, if you do bring your kid to register, uh, the the biggest thing for us is is what we need initially is a physical and a uh, birth certificate copy, and that that kicks off our, our paperwork process. Um, again, we we work with everybody. Um, again, family, we understand we, we have mortgages and we have car payments and we have bills. So we, we understand the strain that, that can be on single mom families and single parent homes. We, right. we get it. So uh, we offer, uh, we're through, we use the cash app. We use, you know, we can do ACH debit transactions. Um, it's, we're really, we're out there. We, we want, we want the, the turnout. Uh, we want parents to be involved. Uh, I, none of this happens, you know, our, our executive board, and our board members, our head coaches, um, you'll see us on Saturdays setting that field up, 8 o'clock sharp. We're there getting the concession stand going, getting the press box going. Um, it, it, it's it's such a – and now it's a routine for us. Right. Um, and it's nice when, when families come along and they want to be involved. Um, we've had some uh, over the last few years that we usually have three or four um, people volunteer for the board, and they can sit in and they, they can see how the operations work. Um, usually, I think we wait till the second year, and then you can you, you can, can participate, participate as a board right. as a board member. Um, but again, it, it's it's such a family oriented thing, and and there's a lot of work that goes into this. And if it wasn't for, again, I talk about support system at home, support from our executive board is key. Um, you know, those decisions you know affect all of us, so they're very open and fluid with everybody. Um, and again, uh, hit us up. <laughs> right, absolutely. And listen, and one of the things, because you all know I'm, I'm an educate, educator, <clears throat> excuse me, and we know that when parents are involved, the likelihood of a child being successful, whether it's academically or athletically, goes up exponentially. So uh, I've worked security a day or two, you know, at oh, the yeah. field. Oh, and, yeah. You know, we alternate, and 
uh, you put on your sweats and, and everything else and you become a football parent. And I think that uh, it's an excellent way because all of the parents are on the field, you know, uh, not on the field, excuse me, but get a chance to participate. And I, when Dre gets a chance to see me from the sideline or see his mother from the sideline working security, like we are invested, you know. So exactly. all of the stakeholders have an opportunity to give back. And I think that uh, when it comes to the registration and all that, I hope you heard, heard what uh, Coach Evan was saying. It's doable. No matter, like, what, whatever it is, whatever your budget coming in, uh, if you need to set it up to be, you know, deducted monthly or deducted biweekly or, or whatever, listen, I can attest to you that they will work with you. So if you want to get your young person involved, it's literally a decision away. There is nothing else to do but for you to decide to get them there. So uh, I think that's great. And one of the things I'll tell you, and I'll, I'll end with this, um, Anytime you can win over my wife, <laughs> Salisa Ebra, when, when she was so concerned about her baby playing contact football, okay? You know, she still calls him her baby to this day. I've got one of those at home, right. too. And, and, I said, and I keep telling him, I said, listen, the boy is no longer, he is no longer a baby. Said, well, he's my baby. I said, well, stop calling that boy baby. He's, you know, but either way, um, when she felt comfortable and she was fired up and when he was getting ready for, uh, you know, getting ready for the games on the weekend or getting ready for practice, and I hear her, you know, giving him a, come on, Andre, get, you know. Oh. And, yeah, so when I hear her, you know, now being that motivating force, like it lets me know she full and wholeheartedly believed uh, and does believe uh, in the East Detroit Tiger Cats program. And so when I told her that you were going to be on on the show today, she was like, "Oh yeah, that's cool." She was like, "Matter of fact, I think uh, I think I missed this call the other, you know." So, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, but either way, um, you know, shout out to you all, shout out to your executive board, to all of my TC parents. You know how we turn it up every single Saturday that we are there, and uh, you know how we support. Uh, I'm looking forward to. I think it's Sean, right? Uh, is it Sean? Who's that? Oh, uh, his his granddad with the. Uh... Oh, uh, unfortunately, they're in another program. <laughs> oh, are they? Okay, <laughs> but well, uh, oh, we've got uh, we've got. Uh, I think right now, we got a pretty good football team coming up. Both uh, all four levels, um, all of our numbers are up. Uh, okay, I think we're going into the season compared to last year. Um, parent involvement. I, I I love you know when we we did conditioning last month. I love seeing full parking lot full of cars. Yep. you know and we got parents on the fence line. Um, and, and that's real telling of, of where you're at. You know, people are excited. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the biggest thing for me. You know, you, you want to you have the results translate so the parents are happy. You know, that's the big thing, you know. That's it. So, yeah. So, you all know, uh, like I always say, your future is not behind you. It is not before you. It is within you. Now, let's give them, these, uh, let's give them the contact information again, Coach. One more time. So, the phone number is 586-774. 1760 and the office opens up at 5 p.m. each day. Uh, yes, if you're interested in a uh, free meal, uh, we have meet up and eat up at 4 30 to 5 30 uh, each day or 4 to 5. Okay, um, then we also have registration is uh, open during practice as well. Um, we have, uh, like I said, payment plan options. Our website is eastdetroittigercats.org. Uh, you can find more contact information there. And then uh, I also, uh, we, we spent a lot of time on football. Okay. Uh, we need to talk about, we also have a cheerleading program. Oh, yes, cheerleading. And my greatest apologies, ladies out there, I apologize. We also have ages 6 to 13 uh, sideline cheer with a yearly competition. Okay. Uh, that competition is held on a, on a Saturday each year. Uh, a very nice event that our league puts on. Uh, we we have uh, again same thing. We'll, we'll work with anybody. Uh, we have really really nice, cool looking uniforms. We've got cool colors. You see it on my head right now. Absolutely. Um, again, the sweet orange and black uh, for for our, <laughs> our cheerleaders too. Our yeah. cheer coordinator she hosts a homecoming uh, pep rally every year. Okay. I don't know if you guys were at the pep rally last year. Uh, it's been a big hit. Uh, each year, it showcases some of the stuff that we're going to use for our cheer competition, and it gets us ready for homecoming. 
So we'll shut down practice early the Friday before homecoming. We go through our pep rally. We do our homecoming king and queen for each squad. Okay. And, uh, I, I mean, it's a real good time. Uh, we, are, we have a, a lovely, lovely, lovely cheer coordinator. I, one of the best additions we've had to the program probably in the last decade. Uh, her name is Clarice. Uh, leave a message for her and, and her and the girls at the office. They will definitely get in touch with you. Uh, that's something that we really want to beef up as our cheer program. And, again, my apologies. We got locked into football and we didn't talk about our, our ladies over there. So. Oh, no. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we they lead, they led us in so many cheers. and Oh, you know, yeah. They were, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they were, get you stomping they, in yeah, the stands. They stomping <laughs> and, you know, making noise and, and us supporting. And I know that they did, they did well in the competition last year. Uh, I don't know the results off the top of my head. I believe okay. – we placed in in two of the competitions. So, um, it, again, cheer turnout uh, has been improving. Um, it's it's something that we take value in. Like I said, our cheer coordinator, we have the, the best cheer lady in the world. She's amazing. So, uh, <laughs> she's actually helping run the meet up and eat up as well. Oh wow! Okay. So, so, so she she's helping run that. Uh, I, again, I feel so bad for not mentioning earlier, but she, like I said, absolute. Uh, one of the greatest people I know, and she's doing really good things for our program. Okay, so on behalf of all of the TC parents and <laughs> on behalf of the East Detroit, East Point, Detroit, uh, Metro Detroit surrounding areas, we'd like to say thank you to the East Detroit Tiger Cats uh, for finding a place and providing an opportunity where young men and young ladies can grow, develop, and become who they're destined to be through and learn those qualities through athletics and cheer. Uh, I think that it's a great opportunity. So, again, Coach Evan, I appreciate you, sir. Uh, TC, we're going to go ahead and take it again this year. And um, I would like to say before I go, uh, for all of my people in Fort Wayne, Indiana, I will be in Fort Wayne this Sunday. July 21st with Bloom Project's King Feast. It's a great program where it culminates a lot of the activities for the year. I have the blessing of being the keynote speaker again this year. And simply the theme for this year is We've Got Your Back. I, I put a video out there. It says, who would your son, your brother, your cousin, your nephew, your student, your student athlete, any young man in your community who will they become if they are provided the right support? And that is what we're going to be talking about on Sunday. So make sure that if you're in the Fort Wayne or surrounding areas, or if you're from the D and you want to drive down so you can see what's going on, I invite you to register. The link is in all of my social media in my bios. You can go on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, all of those are there, and let's make sure we fill that place to capacity. Our Netta Scruggs is leading it, my friend from way back. So love you, Netta, and I look forward to seeing you all this coming Sunday. God bless. Yeah, that'd be cool too.